Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to prove that this limit is equal to 4 using the definition of a limit. So feel free to skip ahead if you want to go straight to the proof. I'm going to start by recalling up here uh, what, what this means. So when we write the limit as x approaches c of f of x equal to l, okay, this means, here l is a real number, so this means for all epsilon, greater than zero, the symbol here means for all, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that whenever we have uh, the distance between x and c uh, less than delta, in other words, whenever x is close to c, then f of x is close to l, so the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. Okay, so we have to use uh, this definition to prove that this limit uh, is equal to 4. Okay, so uh, first we have to come up with our delta. Then we have to actually write the proof. So first we're going to do the scratch work. And this is the hard part. Once we have the scratch work done, the proof is pretty routine. So to do the scratch work, we kind of have to work backwards. So we have to start by having an epsilon. And we assume that this is true here. We assume that, that the distance between x and c is less than delta. So in this case, this is our c right here. Okay. So we carefully write that down. So we have the distance between x and 2 less than delta. So we get to assume this is true. And this should imply that the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. So this here is our f of x. And this here. Um, is our L. This here is our big L. So this is going to be x squared minus 4. And we want this to be less than epsilon, right? We're, we're figuring out the proof right now. We're not working. We're not proving it. We're, we're first figuring out the delta. This is the hard part. Um, so this factors, right? It's difference of squares. And we know that the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta. So this right, being really abusive here, this is less than delta. So we can replace this with delta. So we get delta x plus 2. And again, we want this to be less than epsilon. This is what we want. So this is where everyone gets stuck in this problem. They don't know how to um, deal with the absolute value of x plus 2. So let me show you how to do that. So you have to have uh, some intuition. And then after you have the intuition, you can come up with the solution. So what's happening here is that x is getting really, really close to 2. Okay, it's getting really close to 2. So here's 2. And so another number close to 2 is maybe 3. And then here's 1. Whoops, 1. <laughs> so here's x right here. This is our x. Okay. So if x is close to 2, it's probably like 2.2, like 2.1. 2 so 2.1 plus 2 is less than a number, right? So if you have any number close to 2 and you add 2 to it, it's still pretty small. So this should be less than some number. We just have to figure out a formal way of saying that. Well, we can start by thinking about this distance here. This distance here is 1, and this distance here is 1, right? And so if x is here where this purple dot is, right, because it's close to 2, that means that the distance between x and 2 is less than 1, right? If x is here, the distance between x and 2 is less than 1. But look at that. That matches our delta. So if our delta is equal to 1, we have this inequality. We can rewrite this. When you drop the absolute value, you put a 1 here, and then you put a negative 1 here. Say, so why would we do that? Well, we want to rewrite this and make it look like x plus 2, right? What can we say about x plus 2 based off this information? Well, what we can do now is we can add 4 to all three sides. So why did I add 4? Because that's how we get 2, right? So negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So 4 plus negative 1 is 3. This is less than x plus 2. And this is less than 5. So look at that. x plus 2 is less than 5. You might say, wait a minute, there's an absolute value. Who cares, right? x plus 2 is bigger than 3, so it's positive. So it's the same thing as saying the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 5. So we've determined that when delta is equal to 1, okay, when delta is equal to 1, this is true, okay? But we could have made delta smaller, right? Delta here is this distance here, right? This distance here is our delta. So if it's smaller, this same argument will work. In fact, x plus 2 will be less than even a smaller number. 
So as long as delta is smaller than 1, this argument will work. Okay. So as long as delta x is actually equal to 1 or smaller, this will work. So now we um, can go back up here, and we can say delta x plus 2. We know this is less than 5 delta. Right, because this is less than 5, so we replace this with 5, and we want this to be less than epsilon. Okay, then we could divide by 5. If we divide by 5, we get delta is less than epsilon over 5. Okay, you can actually uh, put a uh, less than or equal to here also, right, if you want it to be less than or equal to. That also works because you already have a less than here. So, so there's no issue there. So let's go with delta less than or equal to, five, uh, to epsilon over 5. That also works. Okay. All right, so now we can pick our delta. Our delta is going to be, well, we want delta to be smaller than what? We want it to be smaller than 1, and we want it to be smaller than this. So if we take, if we take delta to be the smaller of the two, then it'll work, right? Because if, if delta is equal to the smallest of these two, then it's smaller than both of these numbers. All right, so now we'll go ahead and write the proof. So proof. So you start by letting epsilon be greater than zero. Okay. And then we have to pick a delta. So we're going to choose our delta. So choose delta equals minimum one epsilon over five. Then we have to assume that the distance between x and c is less than delta. So then if the distance between x and c, so x is x and c here is two is less than delta, then we look at the distance between f of x and l. So f of x is x squared, l is 4. And now we can't just write less than epsilon, right? That's what we have to show. So we can factor this. This is going to be um, x minus 2, x plus 2. And we know that um, the distance between x and 2 is less than delta. That's less than delta. And we know that this is less than 5. So it's less than 5 delta. And we know delta is smaller. It's the smaller of 1 and epsilon over 5. So it's less than or equal to epsilon over 5 times 5, and that's equal to epsilon. So we have x squared minus 4, an absolute value, less than epsilon, right? Less than epsilon. So this means the absolute value of x squared minus 4, take the strongest inequality, right? Less than epsilon. And that's what we had to show, and that completes the proof. I kind of rushed through the video, uh, so let me just go back really quickly here. So this is the key step. This is the step that everyone in the world uh, gets stuck on right here. And so how do you deal with that? Um, just draw a picture, right? Um, here's two. You're close to two, so you could say you're between one and three. So if you're where this green dot is, that's x. That means the distance between x and two is less than one, right? Less than one. And that's, that's your delta. So if delta is equal to 1, this will work. This whole argument here works. In, in particular, if delta is less than 1, this whole argument still works. So you just take delta to be equal to 1. And then you go back over here, right? And you replace this with 5, right? Because you get the 5 from down here. And you want this to be less than epsilon over 5. I use less than or equal to because I knew that we would be using the minimum. So it could actually be equal to epsilon over 5. So um, I kind of had some foresight there in the problem. Uh, and then you take delta to be the minimum of the two, and then you write the proof as you would a usual delta epsilon proof. So uh, I hope that made sense. That's it.